Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. If you will, we walk in your ways the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia.
reading from 1 Kings. Elijah went on a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he laid down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there were at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him, and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount of God. The word of the Lord. from the letter to the Ephesians. Putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, and only what is useful for the building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with the seal of the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so the one who may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank you, God. You can go ahead and The sermon uh, this morning is titled, Abide in My Love. That's by the Reverend Kirk Allen Tubasek. Chapters 13 through 17 of John are by far the longest treatment of the Last Supper of any of the four Gospels. These five chapters proclaim the heart of the good news for John. And yet, have we ever noticed that from the opening of chapter 13, where Jesus strips down, gets on his knees, and washes feet, to chapters 15 through 17, where he does some mighty fine speechifying, in all of his longest portrayal of that last night with those he now calls friends, there is scarcely a mention of bread and none of wine. It's as if John decides that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and even Paul have covered the blessings over the bread and the wine more than adequately. And I will, says John, tease out what it really means to do this in remembrance of me, to live a Eucharistic life. Enter our words from chapter 6, where John appears to set the institution of the Last Supper. That is, to place the institution in the midst of Jesus' ministry and day-to-day life. The chapter begins with the feeding of about 5,000 people with a few loaves of bread and some fish. John pictures Jesus before the hungry crowd, a crowd that has taken to boats to cross the sea to find the one who is going about the countryside doing marvelous and miraculous things. They've heard about water becoming wine at the wedding reception in Cana. Some heard of the Samaritan woman herself uh, about living water and how she became the first person in John to recognize Jesus as the one who has come. The one who takes, blesses, breaks, and gives away bread. The very same way we still take, bless, break, and give away bread in the Holy Eucharist. Later in the synagogue at Capernaum, he says astonishing things like, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. He also says, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And he says again, I am the bread of life, the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. I am the bread. Feed on me. And as it was in his hometown synagogue, the people are now scandalized. 
forgetting all about the twelve baskets of leftovers after feeding the five thousand. We know his mother and father, they say. How dare he say these things? He urges them to stop complaining. I cannot help saying these things, for I am the manna. I am the bread of the Eucharistic meal. I give my life, my body, for the life of the world. All this is in chapter 6, and is John's institution of the Eucharist. Bread is taken, blessed, broken, and given away. Just as on Good Friday, Jesus will be taken, blessed by his Father, broken by us, and given away, handing over his spirit to his community as his last act of charity, generosity, and love. Yet it's all too much, the love that's shining all around him. It's all too much. Now, jump ahead to the Last Supper chapters, especially chapter 15, where Jesus makes two even more astonishing declarations about who we are and whose we are. First, Jesus says, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. It is impossible for us to imagine just how much the Father loves Jesus let alone begin to grasp the reality that Jesus, in turn, loves us as much. We hear it, we read it, year after year after year. We want to believe it is true. That just as God says Jesus is his beloved son at his baptism, so Jesus says that we too are God's beloved. That God is well pleased with us. We hear this, and like the people in the synagogue, we wonder, how can this be? How can we abide in this love of his? Jesus then doubles down on this love, as if the great and second commandments, to love God and love neighbor, are not quite enough to get to the heart of living a Eucharistic life. Jesus issues a new commandment, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends, and if you do what I command you. That, as Led Zeppelin reminds us, is a whole lot of love. Love. For their Greek-speaking, Greek-hearing audiences, Paul and the four evangelists have a number of words to choose from. There is eros, that frenzied, passionate, ecstatic, and all-consuming love. There is philia, the love of equal for equal, friend for friend. But they all chose the word agape, which speaks of love in which there is one who is loved and is raised to the level of the one who loves. Jesus' love for us raises us to the level of his love, just as he has been raised to the level of the Father's love. We need to ponder the depth and breadth of this love we are to become as we abide in his love. About this love, he says, Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. He speaks not of immortal life or a future in heaven, Rather, this is a metaphor for living now in the unending presence of God, what he sometimes calls the kingdom of God. John places the institution of the Eucharist way back in the day-to-day life of Jesus and the things he does for others. Feeding, healing, teaching, sharing meals. These are the things, and greater things than these, which we are to do to abide in his love. He calls us his beloved. To accept our belovedness is to abide in his love. Once we accept this, when we look upon a host at communion, we no longer see just bread or the body of Christ. Rather, we are called to say, 
Amen. As we receive what we are to become. What we are to become is the body of Christ. And this is to shape our lives every moment of every day. Eucharist is not what Jesus does on one night near the end of his life, or what we do on Sundays. It is what he did, and we are to do, every moment of every day. This is what it means to abide in his love, to accept our belovedness and live a Eucharistic life as he lived. Eucharist means thanksgiving, lives of thanks and giving, giving his love to others. Nothing can be more important or more powerful than accepting this Eucharistic life. Every time bread is taken, blessed, broken, and given to us, he calls us once again to abide in his love so that we may live his love for others, all others, no matter what. This, he says, is eternal life, here and now, every day. By placing the institution of the Eucharist in the midst of Jesus' life, not on his last night among us, John suggests the participation in the flesh and blood, the bread and wine, belongs to all the days of the Christian life, not just Sundays or special days, but every day we are to share the love and the abundant presence of God in the world, the whole world. May God help us all to abide in this love of Christ and of the Father. Amen. Now please stand and join me in saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, ascended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. Lord, Keep this nation under your care. Let your way be known upon earth. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Create in us clean hearts, O God. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we, who cannot exist without you, may by you be enabled to live according to your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, 
forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord God, Almighty and Everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity, and in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we'll say together a prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart as though you have already come. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We have a few parish notices. Um, first of all, a morning prayer led by parishioners continues each weekday at 9 a.m. on Facebook. And there will not be a candlelight pump line on the 11th or the 18th this month, but it will return on August 25th. Um, we invite you to join us just across the street on the corner of the square for a bring your own coffee hour, uh, starting at about 12.15. Just enjoy fellowship with your fellow parishioners. And I am apparently supposed to offer a special thank you to myself for uh, leading morning prayer today while the gardeners are away. Sally Griffiths will be here next week. So, um, all the Sally fans, come on out. Uh, I think that's everything, unless anybody else has anything. All right, then. I will share with you the offertory sentence. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is there the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect.
O God, you have made one of the blood of all peoples of the earth, and you sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. God of love, we pray for your church. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Daniel, the bishop of Pennsylvania. God of freedom, we pray for our nation and all the nations of the world. Unite the human family in bonds of love. God of justice, we pray for the earth, your creation entrusted to our care. God of peace, we pray for this community. Give us courage to strive for justice and peace among all people, beginning here at home. God of mercy, we pray for all in any kind of need or trouble. We pray for those who have asked for our prayers, especially Beth, Devin, Jerry's family, Jim, Michael, Kyle, the Vicar family, David, Mark, Michael, the Smith family, Rebecca's family, Mary's family, Grandma Moon, Roy, James, the Carambo family, Vincent, the Irie family, the Cohen family, the Phillips family, Grace, Scott, Jeff, Eddie, Alexandra, the Lawfer family, Edwina, the Spencer family, Kara, Megan, and Leonard. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated unto you, and then use us, we pray, as you will, and always to your glory and the welfare of your people, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and the loving kindness to us. Amen. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness as to your mercies, that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only in our but in our lives, giving you ourselves in service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Spirit the honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.